In this video, we're gonna be going through all the major updates to Zoho bookings in this new 2.0 version release. Big ones kind of include departments, automated workflow rules, and more. So stick around to take a look if you are interested in Zoho bookings. Before I jump in, I do wanna ask if you find the video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment with any feedback and additional video requests and make sure to head over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like to talk about how we can help on your Zoho installation. So with that, let us jump on in. This is a new, pretty significant batch of updates here coming out for Zoho Bookings. I'm going to run through each of the major ones and kind of give some of my thoughts and opinions. So first off is departments and location-centric modules. This is really useful. So what this is essentially looking at is previously, everybody's kind of bundled into one big group. All the services are going to apply by default to everybody, and you've got to go in and kind of one by one assign them out. They're kind of adding more of like an organizational hierarchy and structure here into Zoho Bookings, which is a great thing. So what we can do is create different departments and different team members can then be assigned to those departments. People can be admins of individual departments and workspaces without having to be an admin of the entire organization. And so what this is going to allow you to do is essentially create different types of services and meetings and workflows and really go through each of these major options on a department by department basis, right? This is really nice because let's say these two different use cases. One, you might be a organization that has a sales team and a customer service team. Well, the types of events that you might offer, the basically like the different meeting types, as well as the types of workflow automation that might be relevant for your usage of bookings can be very different, right? If I am doing a sales team, it's likely that I'm going to have a round robin, whereas a customer service, I might not. You're going to have different types of group meetings. And then importantly, the different workflows and kind of custom automations that might interact with a particular type of booking can be different. And that could be as simple as a different trigger, like, hey, we want to send more reminders for meeting A versus meeting B. It could also be different email templates completely, right? If I'm going to send a, you know, two hours before a booked meeting, I want to send a reminder. Well, I might want different email templates for my sales team versus my customer service team. So essentially, you're just able to draw that line down the middle and make sure that these different groups or teams can operate their version of booking separately from one another. This is exactly what we do in Calendly right now for Zanata. I have a sales team. I have a developers team, right? I've got all these different groups that kind of fit into different rule sets inside of Calendly. So honestly, this is closing a pretty major gap. Another one is if you are using bookings for individual locations, right? Maybe you're a chain of gyms. Maybe it's a hair salon. You can now use this kind of departments feature to group things up by location as well. So just making sure that things stay organized between those different groups. Kind of an interesting one here. I like this. They now have an AI powered setup tool. So this is really like just when you're initially setting up the app. I want to be super clear in that. This isn't like AI across the entire platform for bookings. But if I were to come in, I can basically say, hey, I am this type of company. I am this type of team. And it's going to do its darndest to set things up as a baseline for you just so that you don't have to one by one go through and create every meeting type, create every option. Um, I will say there's a bit of a liberal use of the term AI. Uh, I would more consider this is really just like a template, right? Like I would imagine that everybody who picks sales is going to get these same three meeting types. So is it AI? Is it a template? I would probably lean more towards this just a templated installation. But again, just saves you a little bit of time. And then you can make adjustments to these, of course, and tweak or add or remove any of them that might not be necessary just based on your particular use case. Next one here is workflow automation. So there were workflows inside of bookings, but they essentially had to trigger deluge, right? Everything had to be done just with deluge based on different actions. So now what we can do is come in and create uh, some workflows to automate uh, pieces of communication without having to write code, right? So if I want to send an email before a meeting, a confirmation, a post meeting, right? Maybe I want to get some feedback. Now, of course, we can still use Deluge, but a lot of these are going to be using just default notifications, either via email or SMS. We're going to be able to adjust the types of notifications that go out, the cadences, the channels, all that good stuff. So again, 
Just a nice little tweak here. You could do this at like a really basic level. I think there were some like pre-built email notifications inside of bookings, but I might want to do things a really specific way. I might want five days, two days, one day, and 30 minutes before a meeting to be my particular cadence. And now I can kind of just customize things however I'd like to match my own preference on how I want to be sending notifications and reminders. Next up, Zoho Biggin. So Zoho Biggin integration now available for Zoho Bookings looks to work very similarly to the existing integration with CRM, where you can send these meeting links out via email, and then the meetings themselves are going to be reconciled back against those contact records in Biggin. So why not? Again, we do most of our work over on the CRM side, but Biggin is getting better and better. So you might as well give that a try if you are using both of these tools. Next one here, this is really a big update part. This this is one of the big reasons that we still use Calendly is one, calendar integration syncing challenges that occasionally pop up with bookings. And two, just the robustness of options, right? And how I can set up meeting links and how I can have them book. This one's really cool. So you can actually now have a recurring one-on-one meeting that gets booked directly through bookings, still referencing against your availability. So I can actually say, hey, we're gonna daily, weekly, or monthly meetings on the first Monday, repeating every one month for 15 months, right? So again, a lot of options there that you wanna go through and set up, but this is really cool. I mean, one of the parts of our process right out of the gate is we do book a weekly recurring meeting with our clients. Now, in our case, we have a kickoff call and we kind of book it manually onto that call. So we wouldn't really need this specific tool, but I do really like this idea if you did want to, let's say, do the style of onboarding that we do, but not require a meeting. I think it's worth the 30 minutes, but again, different business models have different requirements. So now you could actually book in a weekly call without having to go back and forth. You can now do a one-time booking URL. This we use all the time in Calendly, right? So I might have Calendly set up. I've got a link for it. You know, you can go in there and book. But occasionally, I might want to break the rules. I want to go outside my Calendly calendar. I want to do whatever I want to do. And so I can go in and basically say, hey, give them an option of these five different time slots and then just create a one-off link, send it to them. Once it's booked, the link explodes, no longer usable. So we use this all the time in Calendly, and now you've got it available inside of Bookings. It's basically your button to break the rules right? I might only allow bookings within these certain time slots, but if I go in and do an ad hoc, I can do earlier, later in the day, whatever I want to do. So again, really nice. Something that's been missing that we actually use all the time as Zanata that now, hey, bookings has it. Next up here, they do have a new module just from tracking all of your different appointments. Again, I normally do this on a Google calendar or whatever my integrated calendar is, but nonetheless, you can now do this directly inside of Zoho Bookings via the My Space tab. My Space, My Space, My Space. So to get started with this, you can enable it within your profile. It's gonna have this little cool pop-up that says, hey, try it out. If you don't like it, you can always switch back to the old version. So I'd recommend, hey, jump on in there, give it a try. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I am super curious. Bookings is one of those tools that so many people are using calendar booking tools like this, including Zanata, and it's just not quite been to the level where I've been able to replace Calendly with Zoho Bookings. It works great for a lot of the more simple and common use cases, but big packages of updates like this get it a lot closer. Again, I'd call your attention to the department-specific appointments and workflows. That's a huge update, as well as, again, these new booking functionalities, recurring and the one-time bookings, both, again, just closing the gap on some of those options in the market and making this something that's going to be more and more acceptable, right? Previously, it might have worked for 60% of people. Maybe now it's at 75, right? So give it a look. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. While you're down there, leave a like and subscribe on the video if you did find it useful. And as always, my name is Tyler Colt, and I will see you next time.